This literally has to be one of the most profound research articles in reference to mitigating some of the effects of aging. Now, although the research was basically focused in reference to premature aging and HIV, the research will allude to its effects or the outcome of this research can have a scope far greater. To those with HIV, this particular research itself can be life changing, especially since those with HIV tend to be very prone to premature aging on its own. Now what we're talking about is a combination of amino acids, glycine and N-acetylcysteine. The researchers chose this combination because the precursor of the glutathione. And they found that this combination of amino acids effectively boosted glutathione levels to those of much younger individuals and or animals depending on the model. But as you go through the research, the results are astounding. So much so, you want to see more research done. Now keep in mind, this is a pilot study in a small group, but when you see the results, as well as open label, but when you see the results, it, it is just amazing. So I don't want to pause any further. Let's get right into the research as follows. All right, glutathione precursor, GLINAC is the uh, acronym utilized here, reverses premature aging in people with HIV. Premature aging in people with HIV is now recognized as a new significant public health challenge. Accumulating evidence shows that people with HIV who are between the ages of 45 and 60 years old develop characteristics typically observed in people without HIV that are more than 70 years of age, henceforth premature aging. For instance, declining gait speed, physical function and cognition, mitochondrial aging, elevated inflammation, immune dysfunction, frailty and other health conditions are significantly higher in people with HIV when compared to age and sex matched unaffected individuals. Now, there are also a lot of ailments which also are responsible, for example, accelerated aging, we'll just say. But that I don't want to have publisher your bias to, but the researchers do allude to that as further research is needed to be conducted. But to proceed as follows, let me skip ahead a little bit, why we age. For several decades, experimental evidence has supported two theories for aging. The free radical theory and the mitochondrial theory propose that elevated free radicals, oxidative stress, and mitochondrial dysfunction, respectively, are at the core of geriatric aging. Now, the HIV group. Both elevated oxidative stress and mitochondrial dysfunction are present in people with HIV. To proceed, in past, the researcher and his colleagues determined that supplementing glynac, glycine, and NSL cysteine, it will go into the dosage towards the end of the video. A combination of glycine and acetylcysteine corrected glutathione deficiency inside the cells of naturally aged mice to the levels found in younger mice. Interestingly, the levels of glutathione and mitochondrial function were lower in older mice before taking glynac. Now remember, this is a human study we're about to look at too. And oxidative stress, which is higher before glynac, also are comparable to those found in younger mice after taking glynac for six weeks. See, that's the point. This is a relatively rudimentary amino acid combination of fairly inexpensive amino acids. But at the level, or I should say, take that back, the speed that glutathione levels were restored is just amazing. Incredibly fast, with a marginal amount of effort, just consumption, to proceed as follows. The same results were observed in a small study in older humans who had high oxidative stress and glutathione deficiency inside cells. In this case, glynac by mouth, taking glynac by mouth, for two weeks, two weeks, corrected the glutathione deficiency and lowered both oxidative stress and insulin resistance, a pre-diabetic risk factor. Now, what we're going to do too is I really want you to look at how much uh, glynac combination improved insulin resistance in these individuals. Some of the markers that it improved and the speed at which it improved those markers, again, uh, are just befuddling because of how easy and fast it did. But proceed as follows. Before taking glynac, the group with HIV compared with the controls was deficient to glutathione 
and had multiple conditions associated with premature aging, including higher oxidative stress, mitochondrial dysfunction, higher inflammation, endothelial dysfunction, and insulin resistance, more damage to genes, lower muscle strength, increased belly fat, and impaired cognition and memory. And you can't say it any better than this because it worked on all conditions about. The results are encouraging. Glyanac supplementation for 12 weeks, glycine and acetylcysteine, orally, improved all the deficiencies indicated above. Some of the improvements declined eight weeks after stopping the Glyanac. Again, it's an open label study. All right, now what we're gonna do here is we're going to go into the full open access study itself. For those not familiar, what I want to show you is the abstract. If you want to look at the full text of the study, you click right there and now bring it to the full text. But I'm just going to give you an excerpt because I really, really want to encourage you to look at the full research yourself. Don't take my word for it or anybody else's word for it, but there's no way I can cover in a short period of time the amount of incredible, incredible outcomes as a result of taking glycine and acetylcysteine orally for 12 weeks because this would be a two hour long video. But to proceed as follows. Let's look at some of those results. Results are body composition. Just gonna read the highlighted line. After people with HIV, PWH, received 12 weeks of Glynax supplementation, there was a striking decline in BMI. Total fat decreased by 2.3 kilograms. Truncal fat decreased by 1.6 kilograms. Waist circumference decreased by 7.3 centimeters. We're going to skip ahead. Insulin resistance. Glynax supplementation for 12 weeks significantly lowered insulin resistance by 69%. As stated by the researcher, a striking magnitude. To proceed ahead further, inflammation, endothelial function, and genotoxicity. Elevated pro-inflammatory biomarkers declined significantly, 65% lower. Let's go ahead. The lower the HSRP, 54% lower, and TNF alpha levels, 34% lower. Just talking after a 12-week period of time, doing nothing more than taking glutathione precursors, glycine, and endocetylcysteine. Again, I really, really encourage you to go to the full text of the study yourself. You may not understand it completely overall as far as the technical terms utilized, but there is no way I can cover all the incredible outcomes as a result of doing nothing more than taking orally glycine and endocytocysteine. All right, the dosaging is as follows. I'm going to leave this for you to break down since it's basically a kilogram per day, a millimole to kilogram per day uh, ratio. There you are, the capsules of glycine, and was 1.31 millimoles kilogram a day, and cysteine, or it should be, say, N-acetylcysteine, 0.83 millimoles kilogram a day, provided as N-acetylcysteine. I stand corrected. They, or I should say, they did correct it ahead of time. And basically, it provided by a licensed pharmacist and replenished every four weeks for the 12 week duration of the study itself. It is just the most eloquent result of such a simple, uh, rudimentary way of consuming N-acetylcysteine or glycine N-acetylcysteine on a daily basis to receive this incredible outcome in reference to what's happening in reference to people with HIV and premature aging itself. Now, again, the, if you're already thinking, you know, what does this do on a regular basis? Let's say you're an individual with diabetes or heart disease or had a poor diet for a long period of time or so on and so forth or a smoker, anything that could basically result in, base, you could say, uh, premature aging. Or basically, how about regular aging? When it basically, you're looking at just generally bringing glutathione levels back up to normal of a younger individual. And knowing glutathione's impact on basically helping maintain the body You'll read the research here describing much like oil for an engine and basically uh, using, utilizing glutathione to get rid of the waste oil. That's how they worded it. But again, I don't want to publish your bias, but I do want to encourage you to read the study. And all links in the DOI citation will be there for you to follow as we conclude here. All right, conclusion. And again, this is an understatement. 
It was exciting to see so many new beneficial effects of glycine and acetylcysteine that had never been described before. Some of the most encouraging findings include reversal of some measures of cognitive decline, a significant condition in people with HIV, and also improved physical strength and other hallmark defects, quoting the researcher. It was encouraging to see that Glynac can reverse many of these hallmark defects in people with HIV. There is no current treatment known to reverse these abnormalities. Our findings could have implications beyond HIV and need further investigation. Overall, these findings in HIV patients provide proof of concept. Proof of concept is a good way of putting it because this is a small open label study, but yet the outcome, wow. Uh, the dietary supplement of glycine and acetylcysteine improves multiple hallmarks of aging and that glutathione deficiency in oxidative stress could contribute to them. Encouraged by these results, the researchers continue this investigation by testing the value of glynac supplementation for improving the health of growing older pop of a old, growing older population, and it's completed an open label trial and another NIH funded double blind placebo controlled trial in adults. Can't wait to see the outcome of that. The results from these recently completed trials support the findings of the HIV study. It said the researcher, who is currently principal investigator of two NIH funded randomized clinical trials studying the effect of glynac in older humans with mild cognitive impairment and as well with Alzheimer's disease. And yeah, there it goes. So to give you an idea. Again, like the, it's a simple Occam Razor type uh, scenario. If doing something as basic as taking glycine and acetylcysteine could restore some of the hallmarks of aging to more of a youthful state, and therefore, even it didn't, let's say, prevent aging overall, but kept the individual aging healthy, which is a big, big concern because a lot of people are getting older but they have less healthy years. So we can extend out those number of healthy years, even if life expectancy didn't increase, that they had more enjoyment in those years. And what an incredible, 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 amazing find. Again, Ralph Turchiano signing off. DOI citation will be there for you to follow. Gratitude, I hope you find this information. Use beautiful, beautiful outcome to this pilot, uh, pilot study, a proof of concept study, I should say. And all the links will be there, as always. Thank you. Look forward to see you all in the next seven days. Catch you next time. Bye.